Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Topics, the series where we look at some of the more advanced and interesting topics in computer science and computer engineering. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be taking a look at an analysis pass within LVM, and specifically it's going to be this uh, MemDep pass, which is a memory dependence analysis, um, and it says, um, for a given memory operation, what preceding memory operations it depends on, right? So that's what this pass does. It provides us with that information. We can actually print it out using this print memdeps, um, uh, another pass called print memdeps. Um, so let's go ahead and get started, and we'll do it with a simple example called test.cpp. And all this does is it sets some integer a is equal to 5, some integer b is equal to a times 2, and some integer c is equal to a plus b times 4. So this should give us um, some dependency between these operations here. right? So b depends on a, c depends on both a and b. right? And specifically, we're not looking at, uh, we're going to be looking at you know, the dependencies of loads and stores here. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. And the first thing we need is some LVM IR, right? Or, or bit code to load into opt for this pass. So to generate that, you need some front end. So I'll be using clang plus plus as a front end. And if we pass in dash emit dash LVM, um, if we do dash S, we get the IR. If we do dash C, we get the bit code. Both can be loaded in um, to opt, but I'll just go with the, um, the IR. That way I can uh, that way we can look at it and compare it to the source. And then we'll pass in our source file test.cpp. So then we can open these up side by side. So we'll open up the IR and I'll split it with um, the source. So the first thing we see is some allocations right on the IR side. And these are basically going to be our allocations for A, B, and C and our return here. So we're basically allocating for an I32, just an integer. And the alignment of integers are four bytes. So it says align four here. The first things we have is a store to some integer, right? And then it's stored at this allocation, right? So this allocation one right here, this uh, uh, identifier one, right? It's saying that I'm going to store zero at that location. Likewise, at location two, it's going to store five, right? So basically, this is going to be a return zero. And this is going to be A, right? We're setting A is equal to five, right? So that's all we do for A. Now, the next thing we, you know, we start getting into something more interesting when we're calculating B because we need the result of A. So the first thing we do is we load in A, right? So we have this load of an integer. Uh, it's coming from some address, some I32 pointer, right? And that's going to be two here, basically this allocation up here. Um, so this is basically just loading in A and it's putting whatever the value of A is into this position five right here. So then that's going to be used here, right, in this multiplication. So remember, b is equal to a times 2. So you can think of this as, you know, a and then the immediate value 2 right here. And we're going to store that in 6. And eventually we're going to store that where it should be in b that we've allocated. So that's going to be this position 3 right here. So you see that we're storing whatever's currently in 6 to some pointer, right, that's location 3 right up here, right, that we've allocated previously. And then we get our final operation, which is this int c. And this is a bit more complex because we have, uh, we have to load in both a and b and do some operations. So the first thing we do is we load in a and b, which are at locations 2 and 3. And those get located, uh, are loaded into 7 and 8, respectively. So the first thing we do is multiplication. Uh, so here we see we're multiplying whatever we loaded in uh, for b times 4. right? So that's this part of uh, this line. And then we're going to do the add. So whatever the result was of this, this multiplication, 9, we're just going to add that to whatever we loaded in for A down here before we finally store it in position 4, which we've allocated up here, which is just going to be C. Then at the very end, we have return an I32, which will just return 0. Right? So not terribly complicated. So let's actually see what we get um, out of the memory dependence analysis from this. And again, it's going to show us the dependency between these memory operations of allocations, stores, and loads here. So we'll quit out of both of these and we'll use opt for this. We'll say I want to do the print dash mem depths pass. If you want to look at all the things available to you, you can just do dash help. It prints out a whole bunch of stuff. So let's go ahead and just do opt dash print dash mem depths. Then we need to do dash analyze. And then we just pass in our source, right? Our test.ll, rather, um, our LVM IR. So then you see that it actually prints out. So print memdeps of function for function main. So here we see um, a bunch of um, dependencies get printed out. 
So let's actually look at it inside of a file. So we'll just put this to out.ll. And the next thing we'll do is we'll, we'll look at the IR and the dependencies side by side. So the first thing we'll do is we'll open up you know, test.ll and we'll split it with out.ll. So the structuring of this is we have the dependence and then, or we have, you know, here's some operation and then above it, what it depends on. So the first thing we have is this store of some integer value zero to some location, you know, one right here. And it says it depends on this allocation for an integer. So this is basically just saying, okay, before you actually do a store to this location, it has to be allocated. Um, and here's where, here's where that allocation occurs, right? And then we see the same thing for when we're storing five. So basically when we're storing our value to A, it says that it's also dependent on say another allocation, right? So the allocation of position two, um, the store is dependent on it because we're storing to this location two right here, this percent two. So then if we go down a little bit farther inside of our code, then we have our first load, right? So this is our load that's going to be used um, for this multiplication, basically when we're creating, you know, our int b. So it says that, you know, our load, right, of this integer, of this i32 from this i32 pointer from position two, it depends on the previous store to this pointer, right, this i32. So basically before we can calculate b, we have to have stored um, our value of five to a first. Then if we look down here, we've got, um, you know, before we store this value after the multiplication, before we do this store i32, um, before we store whatever is held in six, so the result of this multiplication, before we store it in this three, we have to make sure that it's allocated first. So that occurs up here, and you see that the memdet pass prints that out for us. So it says that before we can actually store into this, um, this pointer to an integer, this is i32, uh, pointer, we have to allocate uh, percent three first, or this position of this place three. So then we have something kind of interesting here, which is this, um, we seem to have a load that's dependent on another load, right? So that seems kind of confusing, right? That, that, that may not make a lot of sense, but this is because they're aliased. So what do we mean by aliased? Well, they're both pointing to the same position. So five and seven are actually should be the same value because they're located in the same spot. They're both loading from this I32 pointer that was allocated up here, right? This position two up here. So this into five is being loaded from this I32, you know, percent two. And this, uh, you know, position seven is being loaded from this I32 pointer uh, position two as well, right? So they're just alias. So they should depend on each other. They should be the same value here. So that's why it, it shows this dependence. And then we have another store down here, right? So this is when we're um, when we're going to be loading in our values for calculating C. We see we're loading in first uh, down here. We see we're loading in. Um, let's see, we're loading in from position three, right? So we're basically loading in the value of B, and this is going to depend on uh, up here. It's going to per depend on the store of our multiplication, right? So our store um, created some value at position six, and then we stored that value. And then we load that value um, from position three later on down here, right? So it's this load is dependent on this prior store right here. And then finally, we have our final store to C, right? So C is our uh, the final variable that we create that's equal to um, A plus B times four, right? So we see that the store to C is dependent on our previous allocation of C, just like it was we had you know dependencies for allocation of B and our allocation of A and this allocation for this return value zero, right? So that's basically how we get started with reading something like these memory dependence analysis um, information. A lot of times you'll be looking at this more from um, an internal point of view. So uh, within a pass itself, you'll be using say memdep, um, but it's also, you know, a nice thing, if, you know, if you can actually understand, if you can actually print this out and understand, you know, what the LVM IR is actually saying and you know how to interpret what these dependence analyses or what this dependence um, between these instructions actually is and tie it back to code it can be a useful skill to have. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. So this was a brief introduction to getting started with these analysis passes inside of the uh, LVM compiler infrastructure. So we'll go ahead and link to you know this full uh, list of all these you know uh, analysis and transformation passes that you have available to you within Opt. Um, if you're interested in any of the code for any of my series as well, it's available at github.com slash coffee before arch. All right, so that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.